Hello and welcome again. I wanted to touch base. It is always exciting when I get a chance to work on finishing up Tiki Trouble. Yes, finishing up, believe it or not. I'm getting very, very close now. It's just been really tough and with work schedule and life schedule and everything else. But it has not stopped. I just want to let you know. And I thought, well, maybe I should film a little bit more of... Uh, how I'm working, how far I'm, I'm getting, and what I'm chipping away at. So I thought maybe I'd film a little bit more, and since I can never show what I work on during the day, I can definitely show Tiki Trouble because I get very excited as I get closer to the finish line, and there's nothing I think more important than pursuing your projects, your personal projects, and getting them done, and leaving something behind that is very personal to you. You know, we work so hard on so much client-based work that it's very difficult to find that personal time to do your projects, but yet I can't think of anything that's more important than to get your stories out there or your art out there or whatever it may be, a novel or what have you. For me, this is what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm working late at night when I'm not working on work work and getting closer to the goal. And thankfully I've got good support. As you see here, this is, this is the way I approach it. You know, I, I wish I could draw this fast. Obviously I had to speed things up. I do the same approach pretty much with everything. I I do what I would call a chicken scratch or a scribble pass to kind of find my way in the story moment. And for this particular moment, there's a lot of stuff to be said, even though it's not a big action point, it's a it's an important connecting tissue point of the story, and I still want it to be dynamic and exciting. So I have a love of perspective and, and really trying to push angles. And so I thought, well, how can I make this work where I want to focus on our main characters, which are in the bridge of the boat, but yet we have to show a little bit of these secondary characters because they play a major part in the story. So I scribbled my way through trying to figure out the dynamics of it and with the boat angle and where we're leaving from. And also I had to include these plants because they play an important part of the story later on, but you have to establish them early at some point. So we've been slowly establishing them and I wanna make sure that they continue to be kind of in the background as part of the story so that the reader is always aware, oh, I, I see how this is all kind of coming together later on. So I found what I think is a engaging perspective angle. Uh, obviously, you know, I may be cheating a little bit and tweaking and skewing, but still keeping it somewhat believable. And with perspective, you know, we can have a whole conversation about perspective. I mean, you can do a whole course study about perspective. Once you know the fundamentals of perspective, you can really have fun with storytelling. You may find yourself, you get into a bit of a challenge where, you know, I wind up saying, okay, well, I'm going to have my main characters in the bridge. But then I had to figure out, oh, okay, okay, well, I need to be able to see them in the bridge and, and yet still be able to tell what's going on and I don't want to cover everything up. So I've kind of found what I think is working. So now I'm just going to go for it. So I'm going in here and I kind of envy some artists that just literally just go for it. And, you know, many times as an artist, you're always kind of your worst critic where you're just like, well, it's just not right yet. And I, I need to tweak it and and uh, I, I have to get it just right. And you wind up not moving forward. So I'm, I'm my biggest blockage right now because I just want to get things just right. And Jake Parker says a great thing, you know, finished not perfect and I always love that saying and and he got it from somebody else and I'm not sure where he got it from but but whoever said it thank you because yes that's exactly what we're trying to do although I say that and then I'm trying to make it perfect so yeah I need to listen to myself a little bit more but anyway <laughs> so the secondary characters are just as important in this particular story moment as our main characters because in this part of the story of Tiki Trouble our little Tiki Brewster has commandeered this boat and the boat is filled with the flower hat girls and the, his friends Florida, Georgia, and Virginia and also the plants that they've picked up on their pleasure cruise here. These plants play an important part of the story a little bit later on so I want to make sure that these props are established constantly for the viewer so they're, they're in your, your thought process when, when when we get to their part a little bit later on. So once I've got the scribble pass down, now I can go in and I'm going in with a kind of a, a rough ink pen to kind of tie this all down. And then I'm gonna go in and start blocking in my tonals. My tonals are gonna to be um, very simple at first because I just wanna separate out the shapes. You know, I might do a very generic light over dark, dark over light, just so I get an idea of where everybody is before I start playing with the light further. And really at this stage, what I'm trying to do is just trying to get it as exciting as possible 
and also make a roadmap where it's pretty clear in terms of tonality and where the main primary light sources are and things of that nature. So I'm trying to make a roadmap as clear as possible so that when it goes to paint, it's it's pretty well defined in terms of okay i understand what you're trying to do here and ryan's gonna come in and do his wonderful work on top of this and it just adds to the overall of how we get to the finish line it's important to try and make something work as a gray tone because you can really see your darks and lights you can see how something is reading you know even as a painter when you take any of your paintings and if you're doing something in Photoshop just put a gray color layer over it and you'll you'll see very quickly how your values kind of either pop out or if they're all even you need to adjust them it's a nice way to try and define the values and where they need to be punched up where they need to be kind of you know uh, tweaked things of that nature just like when I'm drawing any of the characters, I'm always trying to flip them because your brain has a tendency to see things from one side, but when you flip the drawing, you're like, oh my goodness, it's like, you know, the skull needs to be adjusted, the eyes need to be adjusted. So it's just another good practice if you're painting. Put a gray card over it and just put it on a color layer and you'll you'll be able to really see kind of how things are working. One of the nice things about working in gray tone all the time, you just inherently start to think that way and I think it will only help you if you were to go ahead and, and then do some painting on top of that. Sometimes I wish I went with a much rougher style for this book, but we are deep in the road here and there's literally just a handful of pages left to do, so we are very, very close. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed watching this. And again, if there's any questions, always feel free to reach me. Uh, I'm pretty reachable and uh, we'll get you closer and I'll, I'll try and do more videos. Thanks.